First day on the job, sharing an office with these three old Apollo guys, one of whom thought it was the funniest thing in the world to show up, drop 10 books of advanced mathematics on my desk and tell me that this is what I needed to learn to be able to do thermal analysis. I was so horrified. I remember to this day, I went home that night and I literally cried. I called my mom. I thought, I'm never going to be able to do this. I'm never going to be able to work at NASA. Well, it turned out that was just sort of this guy's sense of humor. And, and to the day he retired, every time he saw me, he would ask me if I'd figured out yet how to solve some partial differential equation or another. So it was quite an initiation to, to NASA for me. I never really honestly thought of myself as a girl at NASA, uh, but because these guys never treated me that way. They always treated me just like one of the team, and I think they, they enjoyed interacting with me as much as I enjoyed inter interacting with them, but boy, it was like oil and water sometimes. It was really different. The shuttle lightweight seats was the first assignment I was given, and they decided, here we go, we got raw meat, let's give her this task that nobody's been able to convince the program to go pay for this, so this ought to be amusing. And so they sent me off to go convince the orbiter project manager that he should fix the seats. Well, of course, fixing the seats was money. So I, I can remember I dutifully went and did all my research and gathered all my data and figured it out how much it was gonna cost. And, and I thought, well, I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna tell him this very logical story and he's gonna wanna replace the seats. By the time the meeting is over, he's yelling at me across the table and I'm yelling back at him. And at the culmination, after all this yelling was said and done, and I told my story, they look across my shoulder behind me to my boss and the and the at the time deputy orbiter program manager says to him, Tom, does this work need to be done? And all Tom says is he just nods his head, yes. And after all this, right, I've just I've gone here and I've bared my soul on the table and we're screaming at each other and I just think it's going awful. And it's done. And that was what it was like. And they paid for it and we went and we did it. And but that was what decision making was like, sort of earning your stripes in front of the program manager and showing him that you knew what you were talking about, you'd done your research, you were willing to defend your position, and it didn't matter what his rank was versus yours, you were gonna tell him what you thought was the right thing. So what I would want people to see, and I, a lot of times I measure, I have a very small world, I have my NASA world and I have my eight-year-old. Those are the things I have, right? My family and my work. So I judge everything by a lot what she says, right? So I think what, what gets me excited as being a lead for something like Orion is, is thinking about the opportunities that that's gonna open up, not just for me, but for her. You know, I look forward to what her generation will do with that capability, where they'll go with it, what they'll, what they'll do with it, where they'll explore, what they'll find. Giving them that tool that, that to me is, is very exciting. I'm Julie Kramer White and I work at the Johnson Space Center.